Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Rosology. I'm so honored to have you all with me today. I pray this video finds you vibing at your highest frequency and living your best life. And if not, then I'm going to be telling you how you can attract the life that you want with some of this Leo goodness we have happening in the cosmos. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to be talking all about this new moon in Leo. I was kind of intuitively led to do this video just all of a sudden. Um, so I'll be doing a card pull here today as you can see I already shuffled all the cards that way my camera doesn't overheat and die on me like it always does in every reading So we'll be looking at the cards as well as I'll be giving you guys an astrological rundown of everything that this new moon is giving us I'm even going to include a new moon ritual in this video along with some crystals and herbs You can really benefit from for this amazing new moon So if you guys are ready to get started uh, Then let's go on ahead and do this. Okay, so so first and foremost, I believe it is really important to discuss the astrological happenings with the stars because I mean this is a video about the new moon and you can't look at the moon without acknowledging the other planets and how they are impacting what's going on here on Earth. So the new moon is occurring 8 degrees in Leo on July 31st for some parts of the world like America and others it will be happening on August 1st in places like Europe. But either way, uh, you can work with this new moon energy for about 2 to 3 or 4 days before and after this new moon so I'm going to get down into all the basics for you guys that way you can really understand because I feel like you know um, it's better for you guys to really understand it from your own perspective versus me just like telling you guys a whole bunch of information I really want you guys to be able to kind of grasp everything on your own as well that the way you can work with it to the best of your abilities if you are new to astrology the moon is basically who we are on a subconscious level so this is who we are if we operate solely from our heart center you can see it as our emotional self and Leo carries the energy of courage love leadership creativity joy because it is ruled by the Sun so even though the Sun is a masculine energy it's a very very giving energy okay so don't confuse masculine energy with just doing for itself because I you know a lot of people kind of generalize masculine energy as in what's well, very kind of um self-centered or it's just very uh kind of egotistical but honestly you know masculine energy is is very giving just like the sun the sun it puts out light heat warmth nutrients and life it provides for us the way that a father would for his family so this makes leo a very giving energy it gives so much because it wants to receive as much back the sun puts out a lot but every planet in our solar system revolves around it and needs it all the time so the sun puts out to get back and it's a beautiful relationship between the planets here and that's exactly who Leo is so yeah Leo is the stage performer kind of like the center of attention like how the Sun is in our solar system so Leo is also someone who leaves it all on the stage for the audience because the more energy in life the performer gives the more the audience gives back to the performer through love admiration attention and applause so it's a synergistic two-way street between uh, two different entities so yes Leo is a stage performer who lives for the applause but he's also giving so much of himself to get that applause okay so with the moon and Leo coming together this is an amazing time to manifest anything you want especially dependent upon where the um, where Leo is in your own natal chart so for example Leo rules my seventh house in my own natal chart so this will be an exceptional moon for me to set intentions for partnerships or better relationships or if it's in somewhere like your first house for example maybe you want to manifest or attract something different about your appearance so check out where that falls in your chart if you know what time you're born with the moon and Leo coming together, this is creating an energetic space for us to be courageous with our emotional self because Leo is the courageous lion and the moon is our subconscious. It's our feelings and our emotions. So when these when these two come together, it's all about creating this uh, space for us to be courageous with our emotional being. So this is a time where our innermost self is going to be thrust into our conscious awareness because this the Leo is ruled by the sun. The sun is our conscious just like the moon is our subconscious so this is really just a merging of the conscious and subconscious on a, on a completely different level um, kind of like what we experienced in July with the two eclipses but uh, much different with this Leo energy so whoever and whatever we've been feeding on the inside is going to emerge fully this new moon and that's because Venus the planet of love attraction and beauty in a general sense is going to be accompanying the Sun moon and Mars in 
the sign of Leo. So this combination is more than just our innermost being coming out. This is about being able to clearly see how much love we are putting out or giving to others and what type of love that may be. So with Mars, who's the planet of war and conflict uh, sitting in Leo, this energy is kind of fighting for love. It is um, motivated to do things for love. So a lot of people kind of say Mars is about war and conflict, but I see Mars as pure will and motivation. That's just my opinion. So there's going to be major emphasis on the love in our lives, whatever that may look like. So everything was created in love. So everything comes from love and we humans are the ones that take love and metabolize it through our own processes and we transmit that energy back out into the world. So what does that look like for you? And that's what this new moon is really going to be asking all of us here. So this right here, this new moon is going to really shine a light on the frequency that we are currently operating on, especially with Venus joining the fray for this new moon. Many people kind of generalize Venus as a planet of love and beauty. But if we take a deeper look at the energetic structure of Venus, we can see how she clearly shows us how we relate to others and ourselves. So however we engage with others and whatever frequency we are vibing on is going to become evident to us this new moon. So if you're feeling low or down, take a brutally honest assessment as to how you are treating, interacting, and engaging with the world around you. Because it's as above, so below, as within, so without. So our relationships can serve as mirrors or reflections of our own self. So if you find it difficult to see where it is that you stand on an emotional or an energetic level, really take a look at your relationship and how you deal with others. Is it a particularly positive or negative engagement? So Venus is going to shine a light on our own strengths and shortcomings through the people around us. So there is major potential here for challenging relationships or the clashing of energies but the reality is these conflicts are just a test for us to grade our own vibrational frequency so we can become more aware of that so this is going to be all about how we respond to our environment so if you're feeling good maintain that if not work on raising that frequency and this new moon is the perfect time to attract in higher energies okay so another huge benefit that we're getting from this new moon is leo is a incredibly creative sign because it's ruled by the sun so leo energy enhances or it inflates whatever it touches so venus and leo coming together is going to add some major flair to the realms of beauty love and attraction and we are going to be wanting to invoke that same energy in the people around us depending on what frequency we're operating on so this is important to know what frequency it is that you're operating on because when we engage with a particular frequency or vibration or wave we are basically opening a door or a portal to that specific channel so you can only engage and attract the channel that you are on so make sure you are putting out what it is that you want to receive back remember this is a major fundamental of leo energy i receive what it is that i give okay but basically leo on its own is all about letting your own inner light shine whatever or whoever that may be so remember that whenever we refer to the moon that is um, us referring to the inner self and when you combine that inner self with Leo this is creating a space for the ego to shine from whatever is within so Leo is going to push out whatever is within the Sun pushes out light because that is what lies within the Sun is just pure light energy so the same principle applies on a more intellectual level here within our personal lives on earth but if you are birthing your own light into the world you will definitely inspire your immediate environment around you to do the same so light and energy is highly contagious light Light breeds more light and life breeds more life so we're phasing out of this cancer energy that we just came out of in July into this Leo energy so we're going from this cardinal water to this fixed fire sign and so this is more about kind of squeezing every ounce of vitality passion and zest out of life you may feel more socially active and vibrant this Leo season uh, even though those eclipses we had in July and cancer are still influencing us heavily um, until the next um, eclipse happens which is next January of 2020. So we're definitely still under that influence of those eclipses um, in Cancer. Another thing to note about this week is Uranus square, Sun, Moon, and Venus. So now Uranus is seen by many as the rebel troublemaker that triggers surprises and unexpected events. But to me, I see Uranus as the ultimate individual. And can you domesticate the true individual, someone that lives solely for themselves, despite what is happening around them, 
them and what others say. No, you can't tame that sort of person, you know, like that's what makes the true individual so exciting is the fact that they are unpredictable because you can't fit them into a box where you can say, okay, this is who you are. Now I can understand you because I've reduced you to this box or this label. So many people see that sort of individuality as rebellious, but to me, it's innovation. And that's why Uranus is considered the trendsetter because Uranus creates trends. He does not follow. So you will never see Uranus following a trend because Uranus leads from the soul and the heart. He's just true to his nature. And this sort of originality is too complex to ever fully understand. This type of complexity, you just appreciate it for what it is and the magic that it brings. So Uranus is restless energy. He's very restless. He just wants to be left alone to do his own thing and his own little magic bubble, basically. So combine Leo the leader and performer with the original and innovative energy of Uranus and you have something so magical and so special and so unique something that cannot be recreated by anything or anyone else and the thing is there's this added bonus of unshakable confidence that Leo provides so we'll be able to broadcast our creations and ideas feelings and true essence with conviction but at the same time be very careful of this at this point in time there's the potential for the ego to kind of get out of hand so you want to really avoid this because overconfidence can make us act impulsively on things that we think are a great idea because we're not being rational enough and Leo is very magical uh, but if you ingest too much of the sun you'll get burned right so practice caution when it comes to misjudging this new moon is about revealing the effect or the footprint that we are creating in the world and that we are going to leave behind basically what impression or impact are you making in your environment in your relationships on your own life this is a beautiful and insightful time to ask the universe for increased awareness in our own actions so we can observe our own influence on the world and the people around us. This new moon is offering a very rare look into the karma that we are currently creating because we are constantly creating karma, whether it's good or bad. We're constantly creating. So this is really going to give us a look, a very rare look as to, okay, well, this is what you this is the influence and the impact that you're having right now. This is the karma that you are going to receive back in the future because this is what you're putting out right now. This is a very rare time. It's something that you really want to jump on uh, this opportunity. But I just want to point out that the North Node is still sitting in Cancer. So this is really about moving to a space where we are practicing empathy because what we lead with or whatever frequency we are operating on is what is going to return to us. So if you're trying to attract blessings in your best life, you must be actively working and committed to whatever it is that you are trying to attract. You have to operate off of that same exact frequency. And this new moon will shed a light on if we and our actions are in alignment with our goals, dreams, and our highest and greatest good. All right. So, so let's go ahead and take a look at our tarot cards. The very first one that we have is the two of swords, the hermit, and the devil in reverse okay so there's something that we need to or already are seriously contemplating is what i'm getting from this right here but we still lack a definitive stance on it this is about our polarities clashing together and not playing nicely these are two sides of us that don't want to merge in their present environment or circumstance for me this looks like the struggle between the heart and the mind or the conscious versus subconscious uh, which is what the new moon always highlights so the remedy to this sort of confusion, this two of swords right here, um, or a conflict, is making a firm decision and sticking to it. What do you want to be? Who do you want to be? What is tugging at you? Life is reaching out to you. Are you being receptive and keeping an open mind to the things that are seeking you? Or are you shooting these opportunities or people or things down because they don't fit the persona that you've created for yourself? And the hermit here is revealing the light and dark in the situation for me. For me, the hermit is saying to to expand your mind as you can see this tortoise is particularly comfortable in his little shell it's safe you know so why leave it um and you can only expand so far when you are trapped inside such a small space just like this tortoise shell here and this can cause conflict and discord like the two of swords here where it's like i, I can't make a decision because i'm so torn either which way the light side of the hermit though is the fact that just because you are comfortably sitting in this space it doesn't mean that there's nothing to to explore. On the contrary, there is a whole universe to explore that lives inside of you. So really retreat into your own being to become more acquainted with your true interests and feelings. The tortoise can only survive in this 
tiny little space if he is comfortable with himself because it's the only thing that can fit in there is just himself so it's really imperative to make sure that we are comfortable with our own space and when I'm saying space I'm referring to that as your energetic field your aura your spirit the frequency it is that you are vibrating on when all the distractions are gone away from you when there is no one around you there is nothing around to distract you and pull you away from yourself and you have to settle with yourself what what does that feel like? Is that difficult for you? Is that boring? Is it exciting? Is it scary? Is it fulfilling? What does that look like to you? Because that's going to show you exactly what frequency it is that you're vibrating on, whether that be a high vibrational frequency or more so of a lower vibrational frequency. This shell here with this tortoise, it's so funny that we pulled this card, the hermit. Our shell is our own energetic field. And if that energetic field isn't right, or if it's something that's negative, it's not going to be a comfortable space with us. We're never going to want to be inside that shell because it's going to be so uncomfortable with all that, you know, negative energy or low vibrational energy. And then the devil in reverse here is telling me that too much time to the self is not wise right now right now we are being urged to interact with our surroundings as well so we can get a brutally honest and genuine review of who we are when we're alone like the tortoise we don't have to deal with anyone else except for ourselves and while this is a good thing it needs to be done in moderation because when you're alone there's the opportunity to paint your own picture of who you are but don't be reliant on your own opinions venture out into the world and your relationships to gain even more insight as to who you are then you can return back to your shell like the tortoise and combine the different assessments between yourself and other people to form a more accurate and genuine look as to who you are and the energy that you are putting out into the world so this takes more than just you um, telling yourself well I'm this type of person well I'm, t I'm that type of person you need to combine your opinions and your assessment of yourself with the opinions and the assessment from others about who you are are to get a, a really good overview of what your energy is okay so let's go ahead and take a look at these oracle cards here we'll see what we got meditation air element communication chiron healing victory i shall celebrate and i shall rise i will let victory make me wise boundaries where do you need to establish better boundaries dance with life do something to change your energy the butterfly Cyan, build your confidence, and the ghost dance. Okay, so for me, these oracle cards is all about dividing our energy and time between ourself and the outside world or the other. The cards are so spot on to the energy in the cosmos. Like I was telling you guys, Venus's involvement in this new moon is going to shine a light on ourselves by showing us how we relate to others. How we treat others is a reflection of how we treat ourselves and what's actually stirring on the inside of us this is an extremely audacious time for healing and transformation like the butterfly here because like i mentioned with this devil and hermit cards here we have to combine what we know and think of ourselves with others opinions of who we are to formulate this really authentic observation of who we are it may be difficult to see and to accept but it's necessary in order for us to break these patterns of the past that got highlighted with the eclipses um in july in this past or yeah this past july here in cancer so so we have to use every tool we have available to us and that includes our relationships as well as our environment our relationships and our environment around us will show us a lot if we are open enough to see it and if we are aware enough to realize it because everything is just a reflection of itself so our environment and our relationships are just reflections of us. When we look to our environment and our relationships, we can actually see ourselves. So when we are open to seeing our own reflection through others and through our environment, it helps us to finally forge ahead so we can finally claim victory as well as healing so this is really going to be a time to um really meditate get to the self just like the hermit card here don't spend too much time um by yourself like i was saying you have to really kind of split that time between the two almost like this two of swords here where it's really going to come down to uh what it is that you think and your opinions as well as others what they think and their opinions so meditation and communication it's all going to be about spending time with the self spending time um with others as well this is going to really give us healing it's going to also teach us boundaries it's going to teach us where we need to create boundaries i'm saying this boundaries as boundaries within the self that we need to create making sure that we are being very true to ourselves and very true to the energy it is that we are putting out making sure that we are actually observing authentically 
what the energy it is that we're putting out and the ghost dance here for me is kind of shedding light on you know the, a lot of these old behavioral patterns and things like that that need to come to an end or that we need to change up or that we need to revise or that we need to formulate and then build your confidence leo is all about confidence and you know um this is a very audacious time to build confidence and butterfly the transformation here so this is a very transformative time this is a very amazing time a very healing time there's so much that can be done here okay so this is what i'm seeing with the tarot cards here very very beautiful uh time right now for deep healing and transformation and also a time to really create and to have fun and to build our own confidence and to really shine our light and inspire the people and the environment around us to shine their own light so this is just a really amazing time let me go ahead and clear this out the way and then we will go ahead and get to the ritual all right so now that we have a complete energetic rundown of what's going on for this new moon we can now focus on the fun stuff like attracting <laughs> so this ritual is really simple and easy it's to the point but it's extremely effective and powerful so really make sure you've clearly decided what it is that you want because remember we have some two of swords energy going on here and that's a sign of reality or the consciousness not being in alignment with the truth so really take your time figuring out what's best for you in your life right now and don't let the overconfidence from that devil card fool you into misjudging what it is that you truly need on a spiritual level so just getting into the tools and things things um that I'm going to be talking about in this little ritual. So the tools that I have here are tools I will personally be using for my own new moon uh, practice. But for crystals, I'm going to be using these right here. Um, so the first thing we're going to be looking at is the crystals. So for the crystals, what I have here is some Labradorite. And Labradorite is a highly mystical stone. This stone brings in transformation and strength by supporting intuition and intellect. So Labradorite dispels illusions and grandiose thinking because it marries intuition and practicality which makes common sense that much easier to obtain basically so uh, this stone heals past life issues and old memories painful memories it's all about transformation just like the butterfly card that we pulled with the tarot read as well as this is a very 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 protective stone against negative energy and psychic attacks plus it's a stone tied to leo so it's perfect for this new moon and it's just a beautiful it's just a beautiful stone like I absolutely love Labradorite and it's fairly easy to find it's a fairly common stone and it's very affordable another stone that I have here that I'll be using is tiger's eye and tiger's eye is another stone of Leo it brings prosperity and lasting success but it's also about distinguishing between wishful thinking and what you actually need it also highlights past life patterns and issues and ties them to our present so this is an empowering stone that deals with the third eye and solar plexus chakra and I love tiger's eye the next stones that I'm going to be showing you guys here is citrine and I absolutely love citrine so this is a citrine cluster and this is just like a rough citrine um, crystal here the citrine is just one of my absolute favorites it just makes me so happy looking at a citrine but it's probably because a citrine is a stone of joy and abundance so it also assists in creativity it promotes inner calm and helps to manifest what it is that you actually need so it helps to allow energy to flow and it promotes optimism citrine also cleanses activates and re-energizes all chakras and it's tied to leo the next stone that i'm going to be showing is pyrite and this is one of my all-time favorites i am obsessed with pyrite there's just something that's so beautiful about it and I just I, I gravitate to pyrite every time I see it so this stone protects from negative energy and a really amazing thing about pyrite is it blocks energy leaks so if you have any sort of tears or weak points in your aura or energetic field pyrite will heal that as well as it promotes physical and emotional health it's also the stone of luck so it brings in abundance wealth and prosperity this stone also encourages you to follow your dreams and is amazing for rituals this also relieves bad um, behavioral patterns and and it's another stone of Leo that works very well with every chakra, but especially the solar plexus chakra that sits right above the sacral and right beneath the heart chakra. 
A few more crystals for Leo that you can use is Carnelian, Halite, Amethyst, Amber, and Garnet. Those are also fairly common stones and very affordable stones that you can kind of find just about anywhere in like a metaphysical store or anything like that. But if you don't have any of these stones or anything, don't sleep on just simple to the point clear quartz crystal because a clear quartz can be charged to match any other stone in existence clear quartz is just that amazing so if you don't have any of these stones you can just and you have a clear quartz at least you can just take that stone and charge it up to whatever it is that you need um charge it up with your intentions and or you can charge it up say you really want pyrite or labradorite or something like that you need a stone that has these type types of properties just charge up your clear quartz with those intentions okay another tool that you can use here are candles so some candle colors that you could use uh, with this leo new moon will be gold green orange red yellow or if all else fails just a normal white candle can be used for anything it's kind of like a clear quartz crystal you can just charge it up and use it for anything some herbs or flowers that you can use for this new moon ritual would be sunflower lemon chamomile hyssop valerian rose marigold anise calendula rosemary mint lavender parsley fennel ginger you can mix these um different herbs together with clear intentions and carry these herbs around in like a mojo bag and you can carry these mojo bags anywhere that you go that's the amazing thing about these or you can dress your candle with these herbs also as well a pen and some paper is going to be necessary so now this ritual you want to start off by cleansing your entire space that you'll be working in so you can cleanse your space by smudging with smoke from inside or you can use sage or palo santo or you can use essential oils like frankincense and rosemary they're very 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 powerful if you don't have sage or palo santo you can say a few words read scriptures that are near and dear to your heart truly all you need though is intention that's all you need if you don't have crystals and candles and all these other tools all you really need is yourself you are more than enough trust me so as long as you speak with authority and keep clear intention that you want to clear your space of any sort of energy that you don't need um you don't need any sort of tool okay you are the most powerful tool you have because you are the conductor yes these herbs and crystals are living beings and they are amazing but they need you to direct their power and energy as well and without you they wouldn't be able to do this on their own they need a conductor and then also after you've cleansed your space make sure that you call on your guides or angels to protect you and your intentions as you work and call on the universe during your full moon ritual so after cleansing it's wise to go into some sort of meditation and that can mean anything to you but the goal is to really ground and center yourself after you ground yourself then you want to really focus on what it is that you want or need and why once you have clearly decided on what you want or need you're going to take that blank piece of paper and a pen and write very clearly what you want as though you already have it so if it's confidence for example you're not going to write something Something like I want or need to be more confident you're going to write I am confident or I am successful or I make this much money or I have so much love for myself that I appreciate who I am and I lead with love let it just come to you naturally trust your intuition to guide you and it definitely will afterwards you're going to want to sign your name on the bottom of that piece of paper you can make this as long as you want by the way uh, but sign your full name at the bottom and date it this is your con contract with the universe and yourself so this is a very 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 powerful thing that you're doing here now there's a few things that you can do to solidify this contract you can bury it outside in the earth like in your backyard or somewhere um, you just want to make sure it's buried deep enough so that when it rains it won't come back up to the surface or so that an animal or a person doesn't find it and pull it out of the ground you want it to marinate in the energy of mother Gaia and as she breathes life your intentions will grow and materialize and manifest you can also set your intentions underneath your candle as it burns down or you can even burn your intentions safely in a pot or some sort of cauldron or something like that 
please, please, please do not burn down your house or anything like that. Um, so practice caution. After you have burned your intentions, you can scatter the ashes outside or in the water or the ocean if you live nearby. Um, or you can keep your intentions in a safe space where no one will bother them. Do whatever it is that feels most natural to you. Whatever it is that you are led to do, do that. I'm just throwing some ideas out there for you guys in case you're you know a little confused as to how to do a new moon ritual after you have set your intentions close out the ritual by giving thanks to your guides angels and spirit in the universe or whoever you are working with and then it's best to try and forget about what it was that you were trying to call in but do something to raise your vibrations so listen to some music take a walk outside paint sing dance laugh you know do something that puts you in a really good space because your energy is attached to those intentions and that contract so whatever energy you are feeling is what is carrying your intentions so if you want your intentions to manifest keep that energy high and you will provide so much momentum behind your intentions that they start to manifest like that like it's going to be amazing the universe will really be able to hear you loud and clear if you're high, if you're operating at a high vibrational frequency and the universe can work quite easily with high vibing energy if you really want to bring out your confidence or your true nature with boldness or courage or if you are just loving this leo energy so much much that you want to keep it with you for a while then you can literally bottle up this energy if there is anything about this leo season or this energy that you're really loving and you're like you know what i need this in my life like more than just this one ritual or more than just a day or two or a week or whatever the case i really want to keep this energy in my life um you can literally bottle up this energy so all you need is a bottle of water it can be as big or as small as you'd like but go off of how long you'd like to keep this energy in your life okay keep that in mind but take that bottle of water or that jug of water whatever it is that you have and first clear it of any and all energy you can say your own words or a prayer but just speak with clear intention and authority you can say this out loud or in your own mind but once you have cleared this water then you need to charge the water with your own intentions you can use the intentions that you set from earlier but hold the bottle in your hands and very clearly state or feel or visualize what it is that you want and what it is that you are trying to attract if it's confidence feel or visualize more confidence if it's abundance feel or visualize what that means for you what would abundance feel like to you what would prosperity feel like to you what would success or victory or that partner feel like to you or that house or that job whatever it is that you're trying to attract what would peace feel like to you balance calmness happiness you know whatever it is you're trying to attract imagine what that would feel like visualize it feel it however it is that you can interact with it because water has memory and the molecular structure of water can be manipulated by us so state clearly what it is that you want either out loud or in your mind then visualize or feel those intentions and that energy flowing into the water after you feel that the water has been charged to match your own energy and intentions set it under the new moon for just one night now this can be on a windowsill or outside just make sure no one can mess with it um, because you will be drinking it so the next morning take a small sip of that water or pour it into your drink or your coffee for the morning and do this once a day for the remainder of leo season and the end of leo season is august 22nd so that'll be the final day after leo season your life will adapt in such a way that it matches the energy you are trying to attract into your life it's going to be crazy i promise you that much this is a very potent and powerful practice to do so use it wisely and that's why i was saying make sure that you know exactly what it is that you want because this is going to be very potent very powerful energy this is something that i do regularly during my new moons when i'm really trying to attract something in that is such a powerful thing because it's not just like a one-two punch like a spell or something like that or like a seven day candle this is like the entire season so this is like a month 30 days of you ingesting the energy of what it is that we're going to be feeling with this new moon so it's going to be major change is happening if you decide to do something where it's kind of carried out that length of a period of time so it's very powerful very potent make sure you know exactly what it is that you want because it will come to materialize i can promise you that much another way you can really honor leo season and get the most energy is through the sun yes sun gazing i love sun gazing it is something that i do every single day as long as it's not stormy or anything like that but there's so much energy and nutrients that you can ingest from the sun just by staring at it for a minute or two a day sun gazing also decalcifies the pineal gland it also expands the third eye and it can combat depression and anxiety it can even feed you like foods do 
because our food comes from where? It comes from the sun. So sun gazing is kind of like cutting out the middleman and going straight to the source. So this is something you can practice fairly easy for Leo season. I do this no matter the season. I do this year round. But uh, this is going to be super intense for Leo season specifically. So the best time to sun gaze if you're interested in this is the first 30 minutes to an hour after sunrise and an hour to 30 minutes before sunset. You will not damage your eyes if you do it within those time windows. Uh, if you do it anywhere outside of those time windows, yes, you could very well go blind. So <laughs> be very careful about sun gazing. Um, but if you do it within those time frames, you'll be perfectly fine. It's an amazing practice to incorporate into your schedule for the month of Leo. So just wanted to add that in there as well. But this is it for this video. Hopefully this video brought you guys some clarity, support, strength, and love. This new moon in Leo is going to be absolutely amazing. Make sure that you really capitalize on it and all the benefits that you can get out of it. Make sure you squeeze every single ounce of goodness out of this new moon in Leo. I know I am, especially with my natal moon being in Leo. So I'm really excited for this new moon. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you guys have any questions, comments, leave them down below. I'll get back to them. And hopefully you guys come back to visit me sometime soon. And I'll be seeing you guys pretty soon for my next video. All right. Bye, guys.